welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Please join us in our gathering song, Jesus, You Have Called Us, down on page 5 of the book. Out of love. 
love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I established my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between you and, you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. The reading from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who, in former times, did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved from the water, and baptism which is prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, and it is he at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. I'm not sure there's any children here today. We had a whole flock of them this morning. They decided to all get up early, believe it or not. So, you get to be my children's sermon, aren't you? Left? Anybody been hiking, backpacking? Lots of folks. So, what'd you take with you? Hang on. <laughs> First aid kit. You said water bottle? Water bottle. You and I are thinking alike. Water bottle. What else did you take? A lamp. How about a flashlight? Alright. What else did you take? Oh, I don't have my phone. <laughs> That'll do, and what else do you take when you go backpacking? Clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I sometimes get dirty or sweaty, so I take clothes with me, too. So there you go. So that's what we take when we go. Um, Jesus went out in the wilderness, and he was gone for 40 days, and guess what Jesus took with him? Not, not a single thing. And, you know, sometimes we need to be alone with Jesus. And Jesus was alone with God for 40 days in the wilderness. And sometimes we need that time alone, that time, that space, that moment. Maybe we don't need 40 days, but we do need that time. And so we give thanks today that um, we can have that time and that we can clear away all the distractions of snacks and water bottles and flashlights and all the rest of that and have time with God. So close and pray. Dear God, we give you thanks that Jesus talked to you in the wilderness. Be with us in our wilderness and help us to talk to you as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Would you like a lollipop? Because you did so <laughs> well at that. And yes, brothers get lollipops too. There you go. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. 
of the Gospel according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Is anyone here old enough, and I suspect you are, to remember Dan Reeves? the NFL football coach who was in Atlanta for a while. In the 1980s, yes, back last century, he did a commercial for the deodorant dry idea. To be a winning coach, Reeves says that you have to pay attention to the three nevers. Never let the press pick your starting quarterback. Never take lightly the last place team and no matter what the score, never let them see you sweat. You'll remember that commercial, right? Okay. So maybe today is one of those days that we will see Jesus sweat. This year we're focusing on the Gospel of Mark, and I always have to chuckle a bit when we have a reading like we have today. Mark doesn't mince words. He doesn't use any extra words. Everything is to the point, and it's immediate, and if you blink, you're going to miss it. Today, there are two verses about the baptism of Jesus, two verses about Jesus in the wilderness, and two verses about Jesus' entry into ministry. That is a lot going on in the six verses, and it happens really quickly. With so few words, though, we get very little detail. Mark leaves out the specific temptations of food and power and glory that both Matthew and Luke include in their gospel. We don't hear that lengthy debate between Satan and Jesus. Mark's gospel is sparse. Because of these few words, it can be really easy to focus on Jesus' divinity. That larger-than-life Jesus clashing with the devil, taking Satan down in a torrent of words. Or even how Jesus can ignore the needs of his own body and go without food, water, and sleep for 40 days, far longer than it takes to kill a mere mortal. And in Mark's few words, we don't always consider the human struggles Jesus had. The times when he sweats just like the rest of us. Isn't it interesting that Jesus didn't choose to go into the wilderness? The text says the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. The human Jesus would never have entered into the wilderness on his own. I'll be honest, I have spent some time in the wilderness, and I didn't willingly walk into that chaos and that pain. The wilderness instead overwhelmed me. Sometimes the wilderness happened very quickly. One call and that was all. Other times the cover of darkness slowly enveloped me. I could see it coming and I was swimming. Does God create the wilderness and then drive us there? No. Does God send us into the wilderness to teach us something or punish us for something that we did or didn't do? No. But our humanity gets all tangled up in these questions. 
Debbie Thomas, in her blog, Journey with Jesus, says that our time wandering in the wilderness can become holy. That even a dangerous time can reveal the divine. This isn't because God takes pleasure in our pain, but because we live in a chaotic, fragile, and broken world that includes wilderness. She says it's God's way to take the wilderness things of our lives and bring from them a resurrection. Jesus' time in the wilderness brought him understanding and clarification of his ministry ahead. Wilderness can help us understand, too. But did Jesus really need 40 days? It's a really long time. For the human Jesus in the wilderness, there was no food, no water, no rest. He hungered and he wept. There were wild beasts likely threatening his life. He wrestled and he struggled with Satan. His battle in this wilderness was not one without a struggle or without sweat. Our wilderness is often when we are pulled into some deep struggle with people or things or emotions, or even decisions, career changes, death, broken relationships, illness, overwhelmed with trying to balance work and family, not knowing what to do or how to move forward, lost and out of control. So I've never counted my actual days, my actual number of days in the wilderness. My wilderness has at times seemed endless, especially the nights. There have been times when I thought I was totally going to unravel. I asked where God was in my wilderness, and yes, I sweated. For Jesus, I wonder if those 40 days were the time that he needed to affirm what he heard, too, at his baptism his call, and most especially that he was God's beloved son. Don't our wilderness experiences then help us to confirm the same, that we are God's beloved? Sounds really easy to affirm we're God's beloved when the world is right. But in the wilderness, when our physical body fails, when we're isolated and lonely, when wild beasts are watching our every move, the devil sitting on our shoulder waiting for us to stumble, it's these times that it's hard to remember who and whose we are. Even though God is with us in the wilderness, sometimes to see God, it can take a full 40 days of blood, sweat, and tears. Finally, and this is the part that I really love, there were angels in the wilderness. God sent angels. Although there are times when I'm challenged to tell the difference between the voice of Satan and the voice of angels, the voices of angels are so much stronger than the voice of Satan. So much stronger. The angels break through the dark and despair. They tell the wild beasts to be still. They open pathways and send people who will help us through the wilderness. Do we see the angels even in the darkness? There have been so many angels in my wildernesses, too many names to mention. Can you name the angels in your wilderness? Then when our wilderness time is over, do we then claim the name that we have been given, God's beloved? and become that angel for others. So why do I care so much about whether Jesus sweats? Some days I need to see Jesus' humanity. I need to know that Jesus has been in the wilderness too. I need to know that Jesus isn't some lowercase g God looking down from on high, the one who has walked in the wilderness, struggled with the devil, and 40 days later come out with God on the other side. I want to love a God who also needs to be cared for by angels. So during these 40 days of Lent, as we wander in our own wilderness, 
as we together fight against the wild beasts and Satan, as we try and turn our lives towards Jesus, let's just go on ahead and let him see us sweat. Amen. God. 
We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Sisters and brethren in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? Please respond, I do, and I ask God to help me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? Please respond, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Now we may turn around and face. Let us now welcome these sisters and brethren to Christ, to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. You may be opportunity. All of them received a certificate of membership. Oh, oh everybody did get it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, yours is in the fellowship hall, Patricia. Anyway, everybody got a um, certificate of membership as well as the coveted name tags that we're all wearing, right? And then the coveted car bag. So there you go. Ooh, I know. Ooh, ah. So we welcome all of the new members into this congregation. Please rise for the prayers of your second. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church that will be in creation and a world in need. God, our truth, the ark of your church has room for many expressions of faith. We give thanks for voices that challenge and awaken your people, especially that of Martin Luther, the newer of the church, and we commemorate. Hear us, O God, and your mercy is great. God, our maker, you remember your covenant with the earth and its inhabitants. Rescue communities and creatures hurting from natural disasters. Preserve species and habitats endangered by human carelessness and disregard. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our light, you know our weakness. Free all who govern from the temptation of power. Sustain all who work for human rights in every nation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our help. You care for your beloved children. Comfort all who are grieving, ill, afraid, in pain, or in despair. Feed hungry people living in food deserts. Protect any at risk from exploitation and abuse. Hear us, O God. God, our home, you gather your people. Grant us health and safety as we assemble. Keep us mindful of any who are homebound, hospitalized, convalescent, or traveling, especially Barb, Dewey, Jennifer, Mark, Marlene, Roger, and those we may sign up any more loud at this time. Leanne? Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We give you thanks for our new members, Nancy. Pat, Karen, Donna, Marty, Susan, Mary Ann, Gunther, Greg, Eric, Alan, Griffin, Julian, Elaine, Taryn, Davis, and Pamela, whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ, and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close enough, close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and prayers, and in service to others. Hear us, O God, God, our hope 
you promise eternal life to your beloved children. We remember with gratitude those who have lived and died in faith. Grant that we may also dwell with you in everlasting peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please share that peace one with another.
She says she wants a bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. gifts of God and for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we have regular bread as well as gluten-free wafers. The darker liquid on the outside is wine. The lighter liquid on the inside is juice. If you would prefer a pre-packaged communion kit, those are available from the ushers. And they contain grape juice as well as a regular wafer. And the table is now ready, and all are welcome.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us unload to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Midweek services will be at noon and 7.30 and will be held in the fellowship hall for our intimate setting of prayer and meditation. Soup and salad will begin at 6.45. Clean up, please sign up to share a soup if you are able. Thank you to all those who serve during our Ash Wednesday service. Speaking of soup, thank you to all of our soup donations for a must for our Super Bowl Sunday. Our raffle winner this year was Hudson and he received a gift card to Brewster. So if that's enticing, you can do it next year. And the winning team for Good Shepherd and overall was the Chiefs. If you like pie, you can consider donating to our envelope fundraiser now in the entryway. Only a few weeks left to have all those envelopes filled by March 3rd. In addition to perk it up a bit, if we get all the envelopes filled, we will celebrate with pie, not only the kind you eat, but the kind that you can stuff in our face as well. <laughs> so come on and grab your envelopes, because everyone loves a good pie in their face, right? I'm sure looking forward to it. <laughs> Next Sunday is the last Sunday for our Outreach Coat Collection. Thank you to all those who supported the cause. And don't forget to pick up your Lent coin boxes. The donations will go to the Hunger Walk. The registration for our Hunger Walk team downtown is open, and we are also accepting donations for that cause. You can see the display with the big shoe for more information. There is a flyer with all the details on the side of the box with the big shoe. It's in the Fellowship Hall and in said sign of Central. Multiple fellowships are also located in the Fellowship Hall, so please make a habit of checking those out in the area with, with, while you're visiting with friends during fellowship. And we have a social justice driving tour. So the Cherokee History Museum is doing driving tours during the month of Black History. Um, and so if you're interested in learning more about that or wanting to do it to carpool or to drive, you're welcome to sign up. And once we know how many people are interested, we um, will get in contact with you about a date and a time. Because it's open to all and it's a free range driving tour. We'll just um, follow the route together as a group. And please don't forget to read your weekly Shifas and the church calendar posted on our website. If you're not receiving our Shifas, you can drop us your email on a post-it note visitor card. You can drop them in the offering plate or just let us know. And I have the Freeman girls here for the special announcement. Those envelopes filled by March 3rd, those who have picked an envelope will have a chance to apply 
a staff member in the place on March 17th. Thank you again. We cannot wait to tell you about our experience this summer. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to all who have already donated. Um, you may know that the uh, Feel Safe gathering was canceled during the pandemic a couple of times. And so this is actually the first and only opportunity that the SAGE youth is able to go. And it is a huge deal to go to one of these and to see other youth and to worship together. So I give thanks that this congregation supports these youth. Um, so thank you for that. And I'm looking forward to a pie in the face as well. <laughs> Please now rise as you are able to request. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen.